I'm Rick Schwader. I'm a cultural anthropologist and a cultural psychologist at the University of Chicago. I'm a professor of comparative human development. In fact, I studied 40 years ago at Harvard University with the world's greatest expert on comparative human development, an anthropologist named John Whiting. And that's when I began to become curious about diverse childhoods, the many worlds of childhood around the world and within the United States. And I've recently been the editor-in-chief of a massive reference work project at the University of Chicago Press, which has just been published, called The Child, an Encyclopedic Companion. Ten years in the making, many years of planning, an international advisory board, so over 600 world experts writing on 570 entries, everything you ever wanted to know about childhood and probably never thought to ask. There are a range of topics, all the way from practical issues in development to topics that will be there for those who are curious about variations across social classes, variations across ethnicities of religious traditions, different regions of the world, in ideals for childhood, in people's conceptions of what a normal childhood is like, and the consequences of growing up in diverse social groups. One of the things you discover is that there are many worlds of childhood, that growing up in different parts of the social order, poor or rich, makes a huge difference. You discover that there are big differences across ethnic groups, across, eth uh, across religions, across regions of the world. Um, so variety is definitely there. If there are, however, some trends in certain directions, and one thing that seems to have happened is that the world has become much more child-focused. Um, the Ring Lardner line, shut up, my father explained, um, uh, that attitude in which children are to be seen and not heard um, has waned to some degree on a global scale, and there's an enormous amount of attention to the best interests of the child, uh, and a tendency to hand over things to the state and to public regulation that were formerly in the domain of the family and were quite private. There are 16 countries in the world who now criminalize, or at least make illegal, uh, the parental use of spanking with their own children. And in, that case, in those cases, the state is playing a huge role in monitoring and, in a sense, becoming the parent. Um, even in the United States, of course, the ultimate parent is the state, but we are very reluctant to have the state take over the functions of the family and to interfere with governance in the family, and it's only in very extreme cases where we do that. This book is aimed both at a non-specialist and a specialist audience. It's written in a way that's accessible very broadly. There's very little jargon in the book. And no matter what area you're in, whether you are a child and adolescent psychiatrist, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are a school teacher, um, you're going to find information that is written clearly, is transparent, and um, it summarizes some complex body of knowledge in a very direct way uh, in essays that range between 500 words and 4,500 words. Uh, and it will direct you to other references if you care to follow up. So this is a way of gaining quick, authoritative knowledge that I think you'll find is both eye-opening, humane, and balanced, written by leading figures who are authorities on these topics.